No-code tools are always evolving to give users new features and new capabilities, and sometimes a simple change to an app's user interface can make a huge difference. Recently, there's been a major update to Zapier's UI, which is big news for any no-code builder. Today, I'm gonna show you all the key changes to Zapier's automation builder interface. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we use no-code tools like Zapier to automate robotic work for our team and our members. If you'd like to see more workflow automation news and tutorials every single week, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Turn on those notifications too. Today, I'm going to walk you through Zapier's new UI for its automation builder, and I'll quickly show you the new notes feature that they snuck in during this update too. Let's get started. When you open up a new Zap, the new UI is immediately apparent. Now, instead of a list of modules, you see a flowchart UI that you can drag around and explore. But before diving into the new visual editor, note that up here on the top right, you can click on the visual editor and actually switch to the classic editor. This should look very familiar to you and be the experience that you've had with Zapier for years. But let's go back to the visual editor. Keep in mind that the classic editor may be phased out over time. We strongly prefer the visual editor though. It's great for visualizing complicated zaps and seeing every component of your nested paths at a glance. Now let's check out a more complicated zap with multiple paths in the new visual editor. This is what we see, and this canvas element is really handy for zooming in and looking around inside of this zap. But we're in display only mode right now. We're not able to edit. So if I click on the trigger here, you can see all of the attributes of that trigger, but you can't edit anything. So let's go into the visual editor on the edit side. Now when I click on the trigger, I'm able to see a very familiar series of steps here. The app and event, the account, the trigger, and the test. Editing any individual action is exactly the same as the classic editor. This is a social media posting zap. So we have this one zap that's posting to Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So there's two layers of paths here. We have a path for Facebook, a path for Twitter, and a path for LinkedIn. Note that the Twitter and LinkedIn paths are linear. There's simply the same four steps in these paths. But the Facebook step actually has another nested path inside. This is because the actions for creating a page post and uploading a photo require two different actions. Here is the image, whereas in the Facebook side, it's just a post body. Because we have two layers of paths, we're able to see this in the visual editor. We're not able to see this in the classic editor, as you'll see in a moment. Let's take a look at the classic editor and see what kind of detail we're missing here. Note that we see the trigger, we see a delay step, and then a path. And we see the number of steps inside of each path but it's pretty opaque. We don't really know what is inside of each of these paths. And in this case, it's only saying that there's two steps in here. But if we go back to the visual editor, cumulatively, we actually see there's eight. So what's going on? Well, inside of the classic editor, we're forced to create a second path. So the two steps technically in the classic editor is the path rule and another path step. So then we see another four steps inside and four steps inside, which can get us to the Facebook post uh, for photos that we were looking at earlier inside of the visual editor. So now inside of the visual editor, this whole content area with app event, account, action, and test data is able to be consolidated into a very easy to see side panel here coming up on the right. So it's a little bit smaller, but it's all of the same information and you can still use variables as you normally would. If you didn't build this zap, now you can easily see every single action inside of the zap. Whereas before with the classic editor, you really don't know how deep this path could go, which can be frustrating if you're just trying to update one of the steps. Let's take a look at probably my favorite feature about the new visual editor, the ability to rearrange. 
you saw in the classic editor the ability to rearrange in a rather limited way. We have this outline feature where you can then grab a step from the side and move it somewhere else. In most cases, it's rather straightforward to do that, but it's not as intuitive as the visual editor. Back in the visual editor, you have a few options. So if we try to take something from path B and drop it into path A, like this Slack message, for example, we can see that the action relies on step eight, which is in path B. But if I grab it and I move it over to path A, we get this nice notification. It says, heads up, by moving it to a different path, that data will no longer be available. If you continue, you will need to replace or remove the following data. This is the data from step eight. So if we move this step, we see that the alternate link from our Google Drive step in step nine is no longer working. It's throwing an error. So let's move it back. And we can see that it is replaced. We also get this notification up top that allows us to undo this action if you did it by mistake. Let's close the right hand editor and do one more test. The second step in our zap includes a Slack message. Now, because this Slack message is only using data from step one, the trigger, we have tremendous flexibility where we can move this. We can put it into path B, we can put it into path A, and we see that we don't get that notification that says heads up. And that's because the data inside of this action relies on data from the trigger. And regardless of what path you go down, the trigger data will still be available. In other words, you don't have that missing data issue that we have when we move items from path B to path A. All in all, the new visual editor makes it much easier to see your entire automation and quickly make edits. So far, we've only edited existing steps, but what about adding new ones? Well, you'll see these little pluses all over the place. You can add a step wherever you see a plus. So if I click on that, you see a very familiar action step selection. We're gonna close this for now and just delete this step. Now, one interesting thing to note is the limitations on paths. So if we click this plus button to add another path, path C, we can still add another path, path D, path E, and we're stopped. You can only have five different paths per path step. And we can go a step further and add another five paths inside of one of those paths. Let's zoom out and see what this looks like. Here we have our first layer of paths, five paths here. And now inside of one of those paths, we can have another five paths. If you feel that your automation requires more than five paths branching five times, chances are you could be a little bit more efficient with how you approach this problem. And you might wanna consider what your triggering event is instead of creating all these paths, because this could be a little difficult to maintain. Finally, let's take a look at a newly updated feature. It's called Notes. Inside of the visual editor, you see all of these little comment boxes and it says add note here. When we click on the add note button, we see that there's this zap notes field and also specific notes for each step. So they also added this little beta feature to generate a note for the zap with AI. Frankly, I don't know if this description really helps anyone any more than looking at the zap actually would, but I guess it's kind of cool. Looking at the individual step notes though, this is interesting. Zapier will show the step notes of any step that you've clicked on to add the note for, even if you don't have the note inside of here. So we could just say, this is the trigger. If we want to. And now when we refresh the page, you see that this icon changed to being filled in, our trigger note stayed there, but our secondary note for the Slack message disappeared. 
only notes that are populated will show up in this list. So even if I go through and click on every single action step inside of this app, all of these notes will disappear when I refresh unless I populate them with something. Also note that the generate with AI is not available in step notes. It only works for the top level zap notes. Let's make these notes actually useful. So these are great for leaving notes to yourself if you plan on making updates or leaving notes to a team member who isn't aware of the automation as you've built it. So in this case, we're gonna say this trigger runs whenever there is a new client added to the new client view. And there you go. Now, anyone who looks at the zap will immediately know what the trigger is looking at without needing to actually open up the step to see how the trigger is configured. Trying this regenerate with AI zap notes, this one seems to be a little bit better. Let's expand this and see what it says. After a client is added to the new client view in Airtable, a message will be sent to a Slack channel. Then two parallel paths will be executed. Path A will filter data and send a direct message to a Slack user, while path B will create a folder in Google Drive and send a message to a Slack channel. This regenerate with AI button seems to be using the notes content and the title of each step. So if you're meticulous and wanna go through each step of your zap and name it properly and add some notes, this regenerate with AI zap notes could get pretty detailed. Tools like Zapier are constantly being updated. Now with the new visual editor, it's easy for anyone to visualize complicated zaps with nested paths and understand exactly how they work. Plus with easily accessible notes, you can add detail to each step and make sure that your team stays in the loop if they're updating in the future. If you're building automations for your team or just want to keep your own zaps more organized, open up Zapier and give these new features a shot. If you've enjoyed this video, prove you're human. Like and subscribe for more automation tips every single week. If you'd like to learn more about no-code and low-code automation, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can find all those links in the resources board down below. And as always, find your focus and stay in flow. Trying to future-proof yourself? Start designing the way your team works with no-code tools, automation, and AI. In X-Ray's Workflow Designer course, we'll show you how to break down every part of a process to find the best opportunities for automation and how to integrate those automations into your team's daily work. You'll learn how to create time for your entire team, get more reliable results, and give everyone a newfound clarity and confidence in their work. Just go to this URL to learn more. The entire package includes over two hours of premium video content challenging example projects, and tons of helpful resources. The course costs just $250 and gives you lifetime access to a Slack community of workflow designers building systems in dozens of different industries. Space is limited, so join the free waiting list today to get notified as soon as the course is live later this year. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you soon in our workflow designer course.